Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock so we can determine whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end we look at the financial ratios. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're looking at is Canadian Apartment Properties and this is one of Canada's largest REITs. They manage 65,000 residential real estate properties across Netherlands, Ireland, and Canada. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 8.1 billion Canadian dollars. Let's see what they're trading at, 47.60, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. And that's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling their actual free cash flows. And free cash flows is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Now we need the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement, and their sales, which is the revenue, also on the income statement. Now let's look at the numbers. Every year they have positive, healthy free cash flow, and their net income seems to be improving as well. It went from 400 million to 1.2 billion and their revenue increases slightly every year. So everything looks pretty good so far. And you'll notice in a few years, they have net income which is larger than their revenue. So it must have been the sale of real estate. That's why their net income is so high. Let's look at that capital structure. The interest they pay in their debt is $135 million. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liability section. Current debt of $436 million, that's debt due within 12 months. And long term debt of $4.5 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Most REITs don't pay taxes, so the cost of debt is 2.74%. Let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 0.81, so their stock is not too volatile. Let's get their current assets because we need to calculate the current ratio later. They have 536 million of current assets and they only list the cash, which is most of it, 477 million. Let's get their current liabilities, that's 665 million. And that's 436 million of current debt, 116 million of accounts payable, that's how much money they owe other companies. 12 million of accrued liabilities. These are expenses that a company has incurred but has not yet paid. And 43 million of other. Stockholders equity, 8.4 billion. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 4 billion of common stock. Retain earnings are $4.4 billion. Most REITs have negative retain earnings. So this company is operating at a really high profit to have such high retain earnings and negative 19 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income, that's 448 million. Let's look at a capital structure, 37% debt, cost of debt is 2.7%, 63% equity, cost of equity is 8.5%, and the WAC is 6.4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows, we also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 7.6 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital that's here in green. We get a value of the company of $6.9 billion. We divide that by 170 million shares, and we come up with an intrinsic stock price of $41. They're trading at almost $48. They're trading at a 17% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. Their estimate is a little higher at $45. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it was increasing little by little every year, but then it dropped a lot during coronavirus. It's come up a little bit. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a great PE, a bad price of sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 6.8. So investors are paying $6.80 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. 
To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding, I like to see below 2.5, they're at 10.4. So investors are paying $10 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1. So investors are paying $1 for $1 of book value. So if the company went bankrupt, it would be able to pay each shareholder $49. So the company is worth more in bankruptcy than active. A popular ratio to look at when valuing REITs is funds from operations. This is net income plus depreciation and amortization minus gains on sale of real estate. And their funds from operations per share is $2.20. But when we do the price of stock over funds from operations per share, then we can value that number a little better and it comes at the 21.64. So investors are paying about $22 for $1 of funds from operations. I like to see below 15. Not such a good current ratio, a good interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities and they're at 0.8, so they cannot cover their current liabilities. This could be a timing thing and possibly next quarter or the following quarter, this ratio will get fixed. But if it doesn't, it means they may need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 14%, I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 3.3, so they can easily cover their interest payments. I don't have any other companies to compare them to, because this is the only REIT residential that I did a video on. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.